Great. Okay. Well, it's um, a pleasure, very much a pleasure to be here uh, and to find out um, about all of the exciting work that's going on in, on, in Opal schools. So I'm looking forward to the kind of the presentations throughout the rest of the session. Um, I'm going to be talking to you today about some of the findings uh, from our the most recent of our three national surveys of school break times undertaken in England. Um, and together, the three surveys provide a sort of 20 to 25 year long view of the nature and organisation of children's break times in primary and secondary schools. Um, the data they provide are pretty unique, certainly unique in this country and uh, internationally. We've rarely encountered any other uh, studies that provide a similar level of detail um, about uh, these important times in the school day. Um, just to flag up our funders, that was the Nuffield Foundation who supported, financially supported the research uh, across all three um, studies. And if you want any information on findings, um, uh, the full, in, uh, full details are on our website, which is listed there. Um, just to flag up uh, and acknowledge all of the assistants that have kind of helped out with the research. Um, there's quite a range of people there, including co-director Peter Blatchford. Um, and then just straight into pretty much the uh, research, uh, you know, the, the, the coverage of the research. So these were the main areas that our school survey focused on. It provided comp comprehensive data on a range of aspects of primary and secondary schools. There was also a separate survey of pupils' social lives um, in, in and out of school. I'm just, yeah. Um, and what I'm going to be talking about is these sort of coloured boxes here um, for the rest of this session. I've been given eight to ten minutes, so um, yeah, it's going to be fairly rapid. Okay, so um, here are some of the findings um, in, in relation to kind of three phases of school. Um, and these are the data from uh, mainstream um, maintained schools. So don't include data from independent schools at this point. But um, in terms of uh, the findings, these, so these are from the 2017 data. Um, the, I suppose the most, the, the first finding is that break times are fairly universal in English schools. We, we didn't come across any cases of schools that didn't have some form of break time. Um, similarly, there was some fair, uh, it was, it was substantial similarity across the different schools um, in terms of the timing of breaks. So most schools um, have uh, a, a, a morning break of a, around about 15 to 20 minutes, usually a longer lunch break, and then occasionally, and mostly only in case of key stage one pupils, uh, a break in the afternoon. Um, as you can see here, uh, in terms of the break time, total amount of break time, it makes up between 16 and 22% of the school day. Um, and an important finding were these two here, really, that um, was the presence of a kind of a negative relationship between the total amount of time for breaks and the proportion of pupils in the school that received a free school meal. So what this means is that pupils in primary schools with higher levels of disadvantage pupils were likely to have less time for breaks. So it's quite an important finding. Although we didn't find this the same finding in secondary schools, um, what was the case was that uh, uh, um, on average independent or private secondary schools reported total break time lengths of much longer, so around about 90 minutes, which is substantially more than the 63 in, in maintained schools. Examining the durations of break times across the three surveys altogether, um, overall our findings showed a decline. So we've got um, this graph here uh, that compares across the three, uh, well, four key stages across the different um, surveys that we did. So overall our findings showed a decline in the average total amount of break time that children get in, the, in a day. So compared to the 1995 figures, the youngest children get uh, 45 minutes less per week of break time. Um, key stage two pupils get um, on average 40 minutes less per week um, in 2017 compared to 1995. And 
students in secondary school are, are the worst off. They get a whole uh, 65 minutes less of break time per week. Um, so that's the equivalent of one whole day's worth of breaks, um, essentially. These changes are due principally um, to the cutting of our afternoon breaks, such that they are, have become increasingly um, a thing of the past. But the decline is also um, due to kind of marked reductions in the length of lunch breaks. So a quarter of secondary schools now allow, uh, will have 35 minutes or less for lunch break. And this includes uh, time for a meal, as well as a, a bit of time uh, to run around outside. So these are quite marked changes over the last 22 year period. Um, and we suspect that in the context of the COVID, the need for social distancing and bubbles and so on, that it's likely that this, these have declined even further. The time available has declined. Um, here are some of the insights from the survey in terms of the reasons for reduction. So most schools cited um, the, the need for more teaching time as a main reason for shortening breaks. So schools have long been trying to extend instruction time and there's huge amounts of pressures on schools to, you know, through the league tables and to forms, constant messages, messages from the government. So um, in, in some respects, you know, shaving a few minutes off uh, break time is, you know, maybe seen to be or perceived to be um, a, a useful way of um, improving standards, but um, I think many people here anyway would disagree. Um, other reasons for um, cutting back on break times was to reduce on the problems of poor behaviour, uh, which are often perceived, uh, well, it was often perceived by um, school leaders that, you know, having a very long lunch break would lead to um, increasing uh, levels of poor behaviour. And then in terms of um, um, other reasons were to create some time for physical activity and to shorten the school day. Okay, um, so there are also some interesting findings in relation to uh, supervision of break times. So um, just looking at this table at the bottom here, we've got um, these represent data from the morning lunch breaks, um, uh, sorry, morning breaks, lunch breaks are relatively similar in terms of findings. But what, what you can see here is that the numbers of supervisors on playgrounds have increased, certainly between 2006 and, and 2017, fairly substantially. And then in terms of the graph, what we see is a, this reduction in the ratios of children to adults. So now there are far more adults to pupils. So in 1995, on average, there were 86 pupils to each supervisor du during primary school morning breaks. And in, now in 2017, this is reduced to 52 pupils per supervisor. So these might... Um, Ed, Ed, I'm going to have to say, like, can you speed it up just a little wee bit? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. OK. In, in, so, um, right, lost my, my, my flow now, Kath. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> No, it's okay. But um, yeah, I mean, so you can so you can see. But in terms of um, the, the nature of supervision, that was largely, um, you know, uh, uh, supervising children from a distance. So we didn't find an increase in structured play times or anything like that, like you often see in the states. Okay. Um, the final key finding I want to talk about here relates to the extent to which children miss full break or lunch time. So this was a new question to the 2017 school survey. So we don't have any comparative data over time. But what struck us um, was uh, the, the high level of schools that um, said that it was often the case that children would might miss a, a full break or lunchtime period. And there were a range of reasons given, but uh, what we found was that, uh, and it was quite surprising, that um, half of, over half of um, primary schools and secondary schools said that they might prevent children from having a break due to poor behaviour in class or during break times or to finish off classwork or homework. So we don't, essentially we don't know enough about what, uh, which children miss breaks and how regularly, but it's, it's likely that some, while some children miss out from time to time, there might be others that miss out on a regular, more regular basis. So important findings there. 
Um, so in terms of some conclusions and recommendations, I think um, one important conclusion is that there needs to be a much greater recognition by school staff and policymakers of the contribution of break times to children's well-being and overall development. Um, these are important social and recreational times for some children. Um, and for some children, it's their only opportunity to play in a safe and secure environment. Another key uh, conclusion is that we know um, increasingly that children are having much less time to engage with peers and friends and that's particularly the case for children with special educational needs. So um, what this means is that the universal and unique nature of break times is ever more important as a space for play and socialization for that chance to get to uh, be with peers and friends. Um, some recommendations for policy and practice from the um, survey as a whole. So um, one key thing is that we feel that policymakers and schools should legislate the time for pupils to have break times. It's important that children have uh, a right to breaks in the same way that teachers and I understand that, that animals have. Um, schools should have a policy on break times. Um, we also feel that schools should avoid cutting breaks further, but given, you know, given the decline that we found, but this is also needs to be about the quality of uh, the break time experience. It's not just about the time. Um, schools should also give pupils a voice in relation to break time. So, you know, what, 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 what break times look like, what happens, what, what, what goes on. And this is particularly the case, I think, in relation to secondary schools, where, as I say, the, 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 there has been a substantial decline in the breaks. And then finally, schools should reconsider the practice of withholding breaks. So we feel that this is counterproductive for teacher-pupil relationships, for feelings of inclusion and belonging, and also sort of motivation for coming to school. You know, these, it, it, it's likely that there are better alternatives to um, managing children's behaviour. Okay, I will stop there, Kath. <laughs>